Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about 10 things you can do to improve your skills or, or just become a better developer. So programming isn't easy, whether you're doing web development, game development, machine learning and AI or whatever else, it's something that most people have to work their ass off to be successful at. You do have a minority of developers that it, it kind of comes easy to, but that's definitely not the norm. So in my 13 years or so of experience writing code, I've noticed a few things that have helped me out and I wanna share those with you. And, and these are not secrets, there's nothing magical about them. They're actually really simple in terms of understanding them, but they're far from easy to do and stay consistent with. But I do think if you follow them to any extent, you can benefit from them. So number one is code almost every day. And notice that I said almost. Usually you hear code every day, code every day, but the, the thing that I've learned over the years is that burnout is a real thing and it really hinders your performance and your passion. And on the other hand, you also don't want to slack. If you go a while without writing any code, you start to get really rusty and uh, I think the same thing happens. You start to lose passion for it. So coding five or six days out of the week, I think is a good goal. The key is to really know your limits and that can be a hard thing to do. Sometimes I still don't know my own limits and I get burnt out. You wanna code as much as possible to learn as much as you can and stay engaged, but also you don't wanna burn yourself out. And finding that balance is really important. And if you can do that, I think it will make you a better developer. So number two is master the fundamentals. And this one is really important, not only because knowing the fundamentals is important in itself, but if you truly understand computer science or programming fundamentals, then you can learn anything. And that's why I find it crazy that people argue and put so much into what framework or which specific tool that they choose to learn. If you know the fundamentals of JavaScript, you can learn React and the fundamentals of a front-end framework. And later down the line, if you need to use, learn Vue or Angular, you can do it pretty easily because you understand JavaScript and you understand how front-end frameworks work. Another example would be with the back end. A lot of people have asked me how I know so many different frameworks from different languages. Well, if you understand the fundamentals of HTTP and the request response cycle, including things like HTTP methods, status codes, header and body properties, if you learn that stuff, then you can learn Node and Express or Python Django, PHP Laravel, or any other backend framework because they all essentially do the same thing. It just really comes down to syntax, which you can easily look up in the documentation. And if you know the fundamentals of programming principles, then learning multiple languages isn't too hard. So this is probably the best tip on this list, in my opinion. All right, so number three is learn on a regular basis. And if you wanna be a developer, in my opinion, you have to be someone that enjoys learning, or at the very least, you can't be someone that really dislikes learning because software development is, is such a fast paced industry. Anything in technology is really, uh, things are always changing. So it's not something where you can just learn everything in school or on your own and then you're all set. Technologies are always getting updated. There's always new frameworks, libraries, and other tools coming out. So, uh, I mean, you don't have to learn everything. In fact, that's impossible, but you will have to constantly learn new things throughout your entire career. So have an open mind and have a curious mind. Try to seek out more knowledge, um, not just new languages and other tools, but new ways of structuring and writing your code so that you can become a, a better software developer. You know, write clean code, which we'll talk about in a minute. Also, know what your preferred learning methods are. Some people do better with books, and some people like myself do better with videos and hands-on projects. So number four is to challenge yourself. And one mistake that I've seen a lot of people make is they get in their comfort zone and then they never leave. So if you're working as a developer at a company and your, your work isn't challenging you anymore, then I would su suggest that you start a side project that does. So let's say you're a front-end React developer. Maybe you have an idea for a mobile app that you think could be really successful. Don't push that idea away because you're not technically a, a mobile app developer. You already know React, so why not use React Native? Because once you know a, a language and, and fundamentals like we just talked about, it's not too difficult to learn something new. And I think when you're working on something that really challenges you, not only does it make you a better developer, but I think it keeps you more engaged and keeps that passion going. So the next one is to practice algorithms, which is a way of challenging yourself, really. And I used to think that um, 
algorithms were useless outside of preparing for job interviews. However, your brain is like a muscle and doing algorithms works out that part of your brain that's responsible for logic and, and many of the things that go into coding. Uh, even though you don't work with that exact algorithm that you're practicing, it's working out that part of your brain that helps you with your real world projects and they also help you understand certain principles and certain methods and properties for instance in javascript high order array methods such as for each map reduce these are really important and they're used everywhere in in your actual work when you're developing a project and algorithms help you really understand how to use them and i know your time is valuable so you don't have to spend hours per day doing this just sign up at code wars or, or some similar website and try and dedicate a couple hours per week maybe even a sunday morning you can make your coffee and sit down and instead of playing video games try solving some challenges and this will help you become a better developer so the next one is engage with other developers and this is something that i didn't do for a long time i started out freelancing and i worked alone for a while so it wasn't until i landed my first dev job that i realized how helpful it is to work with and to talk to other developers and when we think of learning resources, a lot of times we think of books, videos, documentation, etc. But people are also a very valuable resource. If you don't understand something, you can get a direct answer and they can show you exactly what to do. There were things that I had trouble with for years that when I finally got to talk to other developers, they were able to explain it to me really easily. And aside from learning from other developers, I think just talking about code can be really motivating. I, I personally love working on my own. I'm an introvert. I like doing things on my own. But sometimes I do wish that I had someone else to work with and bounce ideas off of. And I, I mean, I do interact with people online quite a bit, but it's not quite the same. And then in addition to just learning from others, you can also teach others by engaging with them, which can also be very rewarding. So next we have learning and writing clean code. And I'm definitely not someone that will refactor my code 26 times to, to save a couple lines or a few milliseconds of load time, or just come up with some crazy way of doing something just so I look really smart. In fact, I would say I do the opposite of that. I think those of you that have taken my courses and watched my, my tutorials know that I'm very practical and I write code that's very straightforward. With that said, you should try and write clean code and I mean both visually and performance wise. So some tips for clean code would be writing helpful comments, especially if you're working with other people on a project. Uh, pay attention to naming conventions and, and other types of conventions. Try not to repeat yourself. Avoid large functions and try to break things up. Uh, I think the book Clean Code by Robert Martin is excellent regardless of whatever language you specialize in. And there can be a fine line between writing clean code and being obsessive to the point where your productivity is suffering. And I know a lot of programmers are like this, so try and find a good balance. You want to optimize, but don't obsess. So number eight is to read other people's code. And I think this is a really underrated way to become a better developer. Unlike tutorials and courses, you have actual real world examples. And it might not be as neat and bundled up like a tutorial and you're having everything explained to you, but that's kind of the point. When you get a job as a developer, a lot of times you're going to be thrown a, a bunch of code that you'll need to decipher, some of which is legacy code and it's really messy. So I would say that reading code can in some ways be more difficult than writing it. So go on GitHub, find some projects that use similar technology to what you're using, same languages or frameworks and tools, and start to examine it and ask yourself how you would have written the same thing or, or how you could improve it. And if you don't understand what's going on, then try to figure it out uh, by looking at you know each line of code and each method that's used figure out what that does find out where the program is initialized and just kind of follow along clone it to your own machine and run it there's there's just so much that you can learn from other people's projects maybe you can even look at the issues on github and try to improve it and make a pull request so that brings me to the next tip which is contributing to open source Eddie Jowd actually has a really great video on this channel for, for getting started with open source and GitHub. And this gives you real world experience and you just learn a lot, not just from the actual code that you're writing, but also working with version control, making pull requests and working with other people. So if you work from home and you don't have a team, it's a great way to 
still kind of have some connection with other developers and, and work with other people. And aside from what you benefit from, you're also devoting your time, energy, and your knowledge into the community. So the last tip is to choose a path and stick with it. And it can be confusing on which languages and frameworks to learn. This is why I create my web development guide every year to kind of show you what's available and, and help you choose a path. And when I say a path, that includes what you want to do as far as uh, a front end, back end, full stack web developer, a game developer, DevOps, mobile app development, whatever it is that you want to do. And it also includes a set of technologies that you want to work with, including languages, frameworks, libraries. Let's say you want to be a full stack web developer. The MERN stack may be a path you want to take, which is React, Node.js, Express, MongoDB. These are going to be your main technologies. So learn as much as you can about those. And I think it is okay to veer off the path if something else interests you. Maybe you're interested in machine learning and you decide to learn Python and TensorFlow on the weekends. I think that's great. Um, but just know your path and try to really specialize in your set of technologies. The purpose of this is so that you don't wind up working with so many different things that you, you can't really build more than a to-do list with any one set of technologies. If you get tired of the path you're on and you lose interest, then maybe it's time to look somewhere else for other options. I'm not saying you always have to, uh, you know, once you choose a path, you can never change it. If, you, uh, if you're not interested in it anymore and you're not finding joy in it, then maybe it's time to, to look for another one, but then stick to that new one. All right, guys, so that's it. Hopefully these tips can help you out. Don't let this be just another self-help video that you watch and forget about. Really pay attention and try to keep these in mind throughout your career. If you have to print them out and put them on your wall, go ahead and do that. But that's it, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.